Hi everybody, today we are going to be talking about ways you can start improving your bar work today. Call them hacks if you like, very modern terminology, bar hacks, but these are things you can start thinking about in class right away no matter what style of ballet you are training in. Vaganova, Balanchine, R.I.D. These are universal truths that will help you. These are not stylistically based. So the number one thing, if you don't remember anything else from this video, <laughs> the number one thing I want you to remember is that bar is not a warm up. It is not a time killer. Yes, you are warming up your muscles. You don't just come into the studio and start jumping. I get that, but bar is so important, it is not optional. You know, if it was optional and it was just a warm up, you can warm up in other ways. You can jog, you can run around and do jumping jacks and what, what not. That is not the point of bar. Yes, you have the benefit of building up slowly towards the end of class, but bar is about technique and strength and working towards being on the stage. So start shifting your focus, and I guarantee you your bar work's going to improve. Because I know all of us get in the studio and it's like, okay, I have to do tondus again. You know what I mean? But shift that focus from, well, I'm just doing these for the sake of doing them, to I'm actually working towards blank. So for example, like degage. This, we're not just killing time doing degage. You're building strength in your feet for point work. Look, you're going through the ball of your foot. This is your glissade. This is your ensemble. Degages are for your jumps. So if you start to think, okay, what am I actually working on improving and building strength for at the bar to the center, you're going to have a much better attitude. You're going to want to do as many degages. I'm improving my jumps instead of, oh, this again. So all it takes is a simple mind shift in terms of your bar, if you're having a rough day. Plie, plie is your foundation for everything. It's not a knee bend. You know, we're not doing squats. This is your pirouette. This is your jump. If you don't have a good plie, you're never going to get off the ground in your jumps. So start viewing bar as very, very essential. It is not an optional step of ballet class. You have to do bar in order to improve, in order to be on the stage. It's just part of ballet that you're going to have to do forever. So really start thinking about that. Shift that focus and I guarantee you, you're going to be a whole lot happier. So that kind of brings me to the second point. Don't forget your upper body. Anybody off the street can do this. Stick your arm out and hold it. Great. That's not what ballet is. Can you stick it out and hold it beautifully and lift the elbow and have the fingers and lift this and put this? You have to remember your upper body. Now, even in, in the balancing training, which I was trained, we did not do this whole head thing and back and forth and all this stuff. We were taught straightforward at bar. Even sometimes in arabesque, it has to be straight front. But it's not here. There was still a life. There's still an energy. There's still a lift. Your eyes have to sparkle. Do you know what I mean? It's not just about going through the motions. You know, even sometimes I see other styles just kind of, no, this is just as important as this. Because once you get to the center, if you haven't been using your upper body and you haven't had that life, it's, it's not going to translate. It's really, really not. So start focusing, okay, on plies from the get-go here or using the head. Even for us, when you can't use your head, again, there's still a life and an energy. You can't expect to do a beautiful Giselle if you're not using your head at bar, if you're not having energy at bar. So start using the upper body. And that really, really translates dancers to auditions. Because I have been in auditions watching them where they are decided by degage. Teachers know by degage if you're going to be able to turn, if you're going to be able to jump, if you're going to be a decent dancer, if you have the look, the style, whatever. I was watching an SAB audition with one of my teachers and literally after she gave the degage combination, she came over and sat down next to me and she was like, well, I'm good. I know who I'm taking by the third combination. So don't wait and depend, well, I'll start dancing in the center. Well, they'll see me in the center. You have got to make an impression by degage, by plie even. Be alive, be present, be there. Being a dancer and being in ballet is a privilege and a gift. Don't ever take it for granted. Trust me on this one. If you're already bored and you're already kind of like, well, whatever, 
you need to stop now because you're never going to make it. So really alive, really lift. You guys know me. I'll tell you hard truths. You can't forget the upper half in all of this. Okay, third tip. Be very careful not to get back in your heels. Again, universal truth. I guarantee you there's no style of ballet that wants you to be back in your heels. I see so many people do tendu like this. So just try something for me. Stand parallel, just normal. Shift the weight to the balls of the feet. I'll do this way. My heels are still down, but there's no weight in them. We're lifted. I feel like I could move and do anything. You know, all muscles are engaged. Now, shift back to your heels. Almost lift those toes up. Do you feel every muscle disengage? Gone. Nothing. And in order to move, you'd have to like reshift. So that translates to plie. Side note, I'm not a fan of the plie like, like this. That's not the point. The point is just to keep the weight in the balls of your feet. As you straighten, don't go back to your heel. Don't tondu and go back to your heel. Number one, you're not using your muscles. Number two, you get to the center and you tondu like this and you're going to fall over. <laughs> so be very, very conscious every time you close into fifth. Again, you don't have to be here. You don't have to plie like this. But just make sure you're staying on the balls of your feet. You don't want to shift back into those heels because you're not going to engage the right muscles and you're going to fall over in the center. And that also works just testing that balance. Test the balance every once in a while. Remember, you're doing all of this to hopefully dance and have a career and be on stage. And with the exception of the ballet etudes, there's no bar on the stage. <laughs> you're not going to stand on stage and do tondu. Everything is about building your balance, building your technique so you can perform, so you can dance, so you can turn. And there's no support during a turn or a jump or whenever, with the exception of a pas de deux, but you got to hold yourself up anyway. So start checking that balance. Make sure you're on the balls of your feet. And not only will that improve your bar work, that'll also improve your work in the center. Okay, the next tip is for your balance. Please don't be one of those dancers that does one and two and three and four and five. You only have eight counts, six, seven, eight. That's not going to work for you. Trust yourself. Watch. Worst that can happen is this or this. But by waiting and 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 waiting, you, no, you're done. You're gone. The way you want to train your muscles, you want to get them to fire by themselves, you want to get them to know how to engage so that when you're dancing, when you're turning, they're there. The way to do that is to just trust it. Trust it. You go down, that's okay. Come back up, find it. That's the way you're gonna start improving your balance. Not by hanging out here for seven, seven and a half counts, eight, done. Hope, I, hope she didn't see me. You know what I mean? Trust it. The worst that can happen, you put your heel down or you re-grab the bar. But what it's gonna do is start engaging those muscles to fire by themselves. So that eventually you'll surprise yourself and go, oh, huh. You're never going to get there if you don't just push it. Push yourselves. That's another thing, dancers. I see so many people kind of taking it easy at bar so they can dance in the center or, well, I'm saving myself, so I'm going to like put my arm down and pretend I'm adjusting my hip. No. Leave the arm out in second. You're going to build your back muscles. Use the head. You know, if you start to kind of cop out at bar, you're not building the strength, you're not building the technique that you need. No copping out. No copping out. I guess that's tip number four. <laughs> Don't start to pretend that your hip is, you know, oh, I'm working on my hip. No. Leave the arm out. Build up those back muscles. Great. You're going to have great swan arms. You know what I mean? No copping out at bar. It's so important. That's how you're going to build the stamina to translate to variations into the center and all of that stuff. So no copying out. That brings me to tip number five. No cheating. I don't care if little Susie Q is next to you and she's got her leg up here with a foot like this doing a développé. Great, good for her. Don't do this in order to get it up. I know in different techniques, there are different variations. Balancing the hip has to be down. Vaganova, the hips are stacked. That doesn't matter. I guarantee you nobody 
wants this. <laughs> so they would much rather see a beautiful position, turned out shoulders down, watch that inside shoulder, than you just getting the leg up for the sake of getting it up. Because, translating later, in the center. Not cute. And I think the biggest problem with that now, dancers, is Instagram. You have to remember, photos on Instagram can be edited. You see some beautiful girl in an arabesque that's like up by her head with a perfectly winged foot and the bottom foot looking like that. Maybe she really looks like that. Maybe she doesn't. Stop getting caught up in the whole Instagram side of ballet. When I was a young student, we didn't have Instagram, and I'm very grateful for it. I mean, it's fun to do, and I know you guys love posting your pictures, but don't let someone else's pictures get you so in your head that then you start to compensate and to cheat because the leg and this and that, and I have to look like her. Photos can be edited. You know, even professional photographers, they're going to edit, like the covers of magazines. Those are all edited. And they make no bones about saying it. So just because you see a beautiful photo on Instagram doesn't mean it's necessarily real. Maybe it is, but maybe it's not. So don't let Instagram influence your own technique in terms of, I have to get my leg up, I have to do this. I have. A ballet company director is not going to walk into an audition and go, okay, I want to see everybody's Instagram photos. No. They're going to want to see, oh, she has a beautiful picture. Great. Can she dance in front of me? Can she actually do a double pay that high, point the foot, and hold it instead of whacking it up there for a picture and bringing it down? You have to remember that, dancers. I know this is such an instant society nowadays, and this is getting very philosophical. But it's about what you do in the studio. It's about how you look on stage. It's about the actual dancing, not about pictures. You're not going to get hired for a picture unless you're getting hired as a model. You know what I mean? So start thinking about that. Don't get so caught up in someone's Instagram photos or their Facebook pictures. Have you seen them actually dance in a video? Because videos cannot be edited. Yes, you can change the lighting. Yes, you can change a little bit. But you can't fix somebody's foot in a video. You can't fix somebody's foot when they're dancing in front of you. So stop cheating just because you think it looks good. Perfectly square shoulders, not here to the front. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is not going to fly. This, maybe a little in more technique than others, balancing is completely square. So that's what's going to count, and that's what's going to build strength. You're never going to build strength like this. So that all translates, and it starts at bar. So if you want to be a professional, you want to be a dancer, you want to have a great career, tune everybody else out. I know it's hard. Trust me. I've been there. And focus on your own technique. Focus on not cheating. If you can do a beautiful double pirouette, wonderful. Instead of five and down, I know that's not bar, but it works to the center as well. And just start focusing on being beautifully placed, using that upper body, weight in the balls of the feet, energy sparkle coming out of your eyes, and proper, pretty, correct technique, not Instagram technique. Because at the end of the day, if you want to be a dancer, that's what it's about. It's about getting a job. It's about being on the stage. It's not about looking pretty in an Instagram picture. Okay? That's speech done next time on what's wrong with the world. Okay, so start thinking about these things, guys. And remember, bar is so important. I know that it can get boring. I've had those days. But you have to remember this. Pick your favorite dancer in the world best dancer, biggest star, whomever it is, they start their day with plies at bar. Marianela Nunez, principal with the Royal Ballet, starts her day with plies at bar. Roberto Bole starts his day with plies. So I don't care who you are, how big you are, how much of a star you are, you will always be doing bar. You will always start your day with plies. So it's up to you to make the most out of it. It's up to you to get the benefits. Don't just knee bend. No, just knee bending. Really start to think about your bar work in a different way. And I guarantee you, you're going to see improvement in all, all of your dancing. So if you have another video request, another variation, another bar, leave me a comment in the box below. If you missed my latest Juliet commentary, which is part two of her room and act two, right down there, you can click it to watch. Love you guys so, so much, as I say every time, and I'll see you next time.